Hello, everyone. My name is Monica Kretschmer, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Universal Women's Network and Women of Inspiration Awards. And this is the Women of Inspiration podcast, where we speak with women of inspiration who are leading by example, ignoring the naysayers, and inspiring others to dream big. Now, today, we have a very special guest, of course, uh, our 2020 Woman of Inspiration just wrapped up, and I am interviewing our 2020 Woman of Inspiration Media Award recipient, Tracy Lamry. Tracy, it is so great um, to have you on the Woman of Inspiration podcast. I know this is my favorite part. Um, actually, they're all my favorite parts of the award process, but this is one that I really, really love because I get the opportunity to go behind the scenes and everybody wants to know what their story is. You know, like uh, the wards can't be long enough uh, to tell all the stories. So this is where we get to have a conversation with you and you get to share your story and and talk to our listeners and our viewers. So welcome, Tracy. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for everything that you you do. You are, you know, you and women of inspiration for all of us, for women across Canada. Thank you. Aww. Yeah. Big love to, to you. It's so important. Well, I, I know that I say this, that when we celebrate one woman, we celebrate all women. And I truly do mean that. And, you know, so by shining the spotlight on you, Tracy, and you having the ability to tell your story and why you do what you do with such passion, other women are going, ah, I can do that too. Or it inspires them to sort of take action on their own dreams. So Tracy, it's really great. You are the founder and CEO and creative director of Lamry, uh, Lamori. I, I'm getting this mixed up here. I, I don't want to redo this again. <laughs> Lamry Media. Um, so Tracy, tell me how this started. I know it's been a journey. You didn't wake up one day and all of a sudden start your, your media company, but let's go back to why you actually started the media company and you didn't take the conventional path of journalism and school, what was that for you? And how did you start your journey? The short story, I always wanted to be a journalist, so that could have been my path, but I didn't end up that way. Um, yeah, basically my story is one that you just follow your passions and your dreams, and you probably have skills and things that you've developed in your life, other part of your life that you could turn into professional life. So I, I, before there was a company, I was just an activist with my husband, Dave Parkinson. Um, we had a radio show. We were social justice activists. Long story short, we became aware of a case of Jimmy Dennis, an innocent man on death row in Pennsylvania. We got involved with that case when nobody else was talking about it. We built a platform in the early days of the internet, got international media attention. Ultimately, um, a legal team came and got involved. The courts finally, 20 years in, agreed with us, and he was released in 2017 on evidence of actual factual innocence, so nobody denies that now. Today, he is a musician, and he's recording, and he's been on some platforms with, you know, Ja Rule and Naughty by Nature, and so, but basically, how, before he was released, about 10 years ago, um, it suddenly hit me that I had been extremely successful in getting media attention for that case and also the organization that we developed as a result of it, the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty to fight uh, injustices in the death penalty state side. And without thinking about PR or being a politician or, or sorry, being a publicist, I learned how to do the work of a publicist. I learned how to write a press release, learned it on Alta Vista pre-Google. I literally searched, you know, how to write a press release. And uh, you hear that now and you think I'm a junior, but I mean, now I'm, I'm literally an international award-winning publicist. So in those 10 years that developed between, you know, 1992 or sorry, 2012, um, or so when I started freelancing, realizing, geez, I don't want to be telemarketing and doing sales stuff anymore because I've actually developed this entire successful skill set that in my other part of my life, I've been successful in getting my messaging on CNN, on NBC, on MSNBC. And it li I literally said to myself one, one hour, I don't want to make 20 calls an hour about something I don't care about anymore. I literally said, I think I'm going to be a publicist. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. In night in 2012, and I started by freelancing on all, because I'd already been a campaign manager through my activist work. And I'd already written many press releases through my activist work and through the campaign work. So basically, I just, all I had to do was get clients and start thinking about selling it instead of being messaging that, you know, just activist work that I cared about. And so I started with, 
you know, freelance sites. And two or three years in, my husband and myself started a general partnership, formalized it as a general partnership. That was five years ago. And we just now incorporated two months ago. So now we're Lamori Media Inc. And throughout that journey, you know, in between all those little points, I've been serving clients internationally from, from Rosa Parks' cousin, you know, civil rights legend Rosa Parks. Her cousin has a book and a film about her, and she's been my client in 2016. I've worked with Richard Pryor's son. I've worked with, you know, authors. I worked with, so I literally work across the board. And, 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 and mostly I work on things I'm passionate about. I have the luxury of being able to choose the voices that I want to amplify. And so... You know, my professional work now is, be, is very much like my activist work was 20 years ago, because I still continue to choose messaging that I want to put into the world. Mm. So I feel like I'm super lucky because I've created a career like literally based on the things that I love and messages that I think are important. So, and I didn't go to school for it. So that's my message is just do it. D just like, don't dream it, <laughs> be it, have your confidence. Unless you're trying to be a surgeon or something where you probably have to go to school. Chances are, you know, if you just believe in yourself and start doing it, show the world that you can do it. And we're talking about, you know, when you're an entrepreneur more than trying to get into the corporate world, because it's more difficult, but. Yes, you, that's what there, I do. There's some, <laughs> that's my I, short I think, story. <laughs> I think even in, in your arena, it's it's about continuously learning. Um, you may not have the formal education, you have real life experiences, but your journey is continuing learning. And that comes from a, a lot of different areas, actually. And it's really interesting. You said something that kind of sparked something that I couldn't wait to share with you is our national ambassador, Elizabeth Blake Thomas. Um, she's out of LA. And uh, she started, you know, she says, I'm a film director. And she said, just out of the blue, she goes, I'm a director. And she went out of the gate and she started I'm going to start directing movies and I'm going to focus on what I want to do. But she says, it's as easy as deciding that this is what I want to be and I'm going to do it. And so when you said, you know, I just decided that I was a publicist and you well, literally Mike, in an hour, like I said, it just hit me like, I'm not doing this anymore. And from that day, I literally did not have, I, From I was sitting there making calls, 20 calls an hour, like I had been for 10 years. And then I had that thought and I stopped doing it. The next hour, I wasn't making 20. I was literally like, and I wasn't mad. It was, it was, it, it was more like a spark that hit me. Wait a minute. <laughs> Why am I doing it when, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know what it is it's mindset and that's what the lesson is it's literally whatever it is you know put your baker candlestick maker publicist you know when you really it's a cliche but what it's not a cliche it's, you know it's a cliche because it's true when you really believe it and when you really believe in yourself it's like i always use i always laugh and i but i love the rocky horror picture show and I, I use that one of the line when I was asked on a podcast, what are your words of wisdom? One of the phrases of wisdom I said is don't dream it, be it. It's a line from a silly song from Rocky or a picture show, but it's like, just do it. The Nike thing, but it's true. Don't just sit there and think about something that you want, wish you could do that other people do. Just realize it could be you. If another, if a human being has done it, you can do it. <laughs> like there's, there's no reason you can't, if you want you know, What's the path they took? What's an alternate path? How do I get there? You know, just it all starts with really, literally, truly believing in yourself. And also, you know, it's important to be acknowledged, too. That's the other part of it. We, you know, so what you do, you know, what Women Inspiration does hugely, not just amplifies it. I always say I amplify the good work other people are doing. And you do that with Women of Inspiration. But you're not only just amplifying it, you're giving it credibility, you're giving it a spotlight, you're you know, you're showing how important the work of all these different women across industries are, across industries, and not even just across industries, because you have little Bolu, my, my, my friend and client, 13-year-old Bolu, well, I guess she, her industry is now music, right? But it wasn't before, it was just her, from her heart trying to change the world, right? So, and now she has, she can say that she's a, you know, win, woman of inspiration winner, and that 100% amplifies, and now she can take that, and, you know, who knows what she's going to do, she can do anything with that at 13 years old. And, you know, so what you do and, you know, what we, what we do when we shine the spotlight on, you know, the work of 
people, the work of women, the amazing work that we're doing is encourages each other. And it actually gives us more power. Mm. It gives us more power because we understand like when, you know, when people applaud, oh, that's great that you've done that. You're like, oh, that's right. I, wow, <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it, but I did. You know, so some of us have a lot of accolades in our work you know, because our work is public. Other people do amazing work every day and they literally never get an, nothing other than, you know, maybe a little star at work or something. But what you do empowers all of us to see like the amazing work that we, we could be doing or we, you know, so yeah, wow, it's very powerful. I'm just super excited here, seeing the ripple effect that has happened, Tracy. And I want to go back to something really important here. It's um, validating your worth, um, you know, and it's just, a, it's just as so much as I see you, I see your contribution, I see your hard work and, mm -hmm. you know, just simple little things. And, and it's just acknowledgement and it, it makes somebody kind of go, you know what, everything that I'm fighting for, everything that I work tooth and nail every single day, it's making a difference. And that's all we ever want is to know that we belong and that what we're doing has value. And that we're and even on a personal level, like I was saying to you before, I wanted to share this with you with the podcast listeners too. I mentioned this to you when we came on as you know, because my work is public, this is a big award for me. I mean, this is a big, big one, probably the biggest. But because my work is public, I have lots of little accolades and little applauses and people. And a lot of times I'm telling my mom or my parents, I'm 51 years old yesterday. You know, so I'm 51. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Even at 51, I've, I've realized now, like, how important you know, your parents saying, gee, I'm proud of you is. <laughs> because even with all the accomplishments or little, you know, things I do in the, in the business world that I message, oh, this great thing happened, this great thing happened, this little thing, you know, and my mom's like, oh, yeah, they don't really necessarily understand it or see it, no matter what your industry is. They don't know what you're doing or you might have a thing, but they don't, it's like, oh, that's great, dear, you know. But this, I've noticed women, winning the Women of Inspiration, Women of Media, my parents, both of my parents are like, wow, I'm so proud of you. Like this is something they're like, they can process, you know, like it's, and it's a national honor. It's a, so yeah. So I'm, I'm you know, re really feeling that even as someone who is often applauded and has my work recognized and blah, blah, blah. And this is something different. And the way you present it is something different. And, you know, the national scope of it and the fact that I think also it's powerful that you, that it is women across industries and not just one industry. You know, because then you're, I think it's just amazing. Like, so that's one thing that I want people to really understand too, is, you know, it, it really does like, wow, it's, it's a big thing. You've done, I, I elect Monica for the Women of Inspiration. I want to know honestly how to nominate you. And if there's no way to nominate you, we've discovered a problem in the process. <laughs> Oh, you're so sweet. You know what? It's no, so for real. Ask all the Women of Inspiration. We're all going to be like, hmm. Look who we're inspired by. <laughs> well, I have to share that I have a little boy and, you know, he's not so little anymore. He's 14, but in 2018, <laughs> I mean, so I want to touch on a couple things here. The people that are closest to us are so close to the source. They see most of the time, they see all the hard work. They see the tears. They see the struggles. They see the long hours. They see a lot of the failures, right? And most of the time they see your work and they see how hard you work and think that you should be rewarded more for it. So what I've noticed, Tracy, is that when something like this big happens, it's like all of those small wins, successes, milestones all add up to something and finally they're like I see it and it gives them an opportunity because it puts it all in perspective because most of the time the people in our inner circle they have no idea what we do just saying they don't um they see us all the time um they see more of the struggle less of the success bar none good point good point yeah Right, and so, they don't see it compared. Like they, it's in a, it's a microcosm of just that person in that room. But you know, when it's like, you know, you're elevated above, you know, in your industry, or you know what I mean. Like you're, you won the whatever, you won all of the awards. You know, they're all. And I just want, I have to say, because I'm all about elevating my clients. Like, I am so thrilled, like just by happenstance and like luck, because I had, you know, recommended all kinds of 
you know, I can imagine nominated all kinds of amazing women. And in, and on the, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm thrilled about my win. Couldn't be happier. But there's one thing I'm happier about than my win, which is Bolu, it's 13 year old Bolu that I mentioned, and then all, at the very beginning of her career for Youth Excellence, and then Patricia Gagic, my my hugely accomplished artist author client, for, for you know for um what would you call it them um, lifetime yeah, achievement. Time. She so, won lifetime awards. We have so there it really shows in microcosm, you know. Again, you're from the beginning of your career, just blossoming and sharing your voice and finding your power, which now you've put a rocket under that little girl, you know, for power to somebody who has won so many awards, has been elevated and like has an international career that, you know, art awards, one of the top five global this and that, you know, and so it all points in between. That's yeah. Canada. <laughs> That's Canadian yeah. women, and I you think know? We, this is just the beginning, Tracy. I know that when we, you know, set out to honor and support and recognize women, one of the big things is that we're not just honoring the voice of one woman. We're not just honoring the voice of one type of women in one industry. It's all industries, all women, all voices. And we also have the awards this year for the men that support her because, of course, you know, as we know, there's, we don't do it by ourselves. We have an army behind us and, you know, and, and men are part of the um, equation. As far as I'm concerned, um, it's a very important piece of us really breaking that glass ceiling because there's, there's mentors and supporters and champions and investors, and, you know, they're all rooting for us. They just want to know how they can support. So I would like to know from you, who are your support hurts? So my family, number one, my my husband, Dave Parkinson, who I started the King Coalition Against Death Penalty with, who I had a radio show with, who we've done television together, who with me founded Lamori Public Relations and Marketing, which is now turned into Lamori Media Inc. Um, number one, 26 years anniversary next December. Um, and then my family, you know, my, my kids, Haley, who's 28, and Cassidy, my son, who's 17, going on 18. And he's always like, mom, put your phone down. I'll be like your little guy. Oh, you work too much. And he sets rules. Like we have to, when I watch a show with him, he actually monitors, make me put my phone like on the other side of the room, <laughs> which is actually necessary to like fully engage. So yeah, so fa family and then and all, absolutely my clients too, who pay me to elevate and support them. And yet if you go and look at my page and the friendship and the love that they share with me and how they support me and elevate me as well. And you know who's 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 publicist <laughs> because we end up being you know like I have a tribe of absolutely amazing supportive friends and clients who become friends and friends who become clients and you know yeah none of us like you said none of us do any of this by ourselves even though I think you're doing all of this by yourself <laughs> so maybe that's not true <laughs> Well, I have to say it's, um, it's, I, I definitely am moving a lots of mountains and yeah, the team is very lean. Um, I do, I touch everything. So that's what a lot of people, you, you know, a power woman extraordinaire. Like, honestly, <laughs> if you don't let me nominate you for a woman of inspiration, I'm going to start a woman of inspiration that you're going to be the only nominee. <laughs> well, I was, I don't was going to I'll do it. <laughs> I, I was going to finish my story and I got sidetracked, but my, oh yeah, go well. He's the one that sees me working hard all the time. So as I'm ordering all of the awards um, for each year, he's like, mom, where is your award? I'm like, oh, honey, these are just for our award recipients. And, you know, like it's a cost, right? So I'm like, nope. I, you know, and he's like, mom, no, you've got to. And so actually it's because of him that I actually have an award every single year. And I did order another one this year. I'm like, but what do I put on that? I put founder. So I just put founder. And for me, um, it made him ha really happy for one. He's like, thank you, mom. I think you, you need to acknowledge yourself. And it was percent. Absolutely. I'm with the boy. Right. But it also gave me a way of really acknowledging our history of our awards and where we're going, what we're going to do. So, um, you know, so being the, the woman that founds it, I now have a founder award every year. Yep. So I didn't have that. I, I, good. That makes me feel better because like you are epic <laughs> and, and I know the things you have planned are epic. And, ah, like, yeah. We have some epic, epic stuff happening, which which only emphasizes a little bit more of what we're going to do and the reach. And I think that we had shared the reach. I mean, when we sat there 
I mean, I had this beautiful gala ready for us to celebrate Tracy, you know, and, you know, I was really struggling. How are we going to have the same magic that we have when we're in the room? Because literally you did a, a stellar job that and, and sell it like a pet rock. I would trust me. So I didn't really know how, and I just went with it uh, about creating that experience at the awards. When we did that, do you know that the most people that we've had in a room, not quite 800, um, 600 to 800, you know, um, in a room and a black tie affair, really, really fun gala salvatory. Our views are over six thousand right now and climbing still on one i was gonna say as much as i was you know looking forward to the gala and you know we all wanted to get dressed up and it kind of sucks that we didn't get to get on the stage and i hope that when there are galas again maybe we'll have a stage moment with the win you know but you know what in the long term I, I think that we probably got more visibility when i was watching that amazing that award show you put together was stellar. That was no joke. That was stellar. It was looked good. Like I was super proud to be on that. I shared and like, go, go look and what, you know, like copy that little piece and go share that, and put that in my ad. You know, it was so well done. And I think that in the long run, I actually thought, I thought, you know what, a lot more people are going to see me win that award mm -hmm. than would have, you know, than, than would have seen me on the stage at the gala, even though I would have been clicking and Instagramming and all that. Now it's a video. It is like an actual, it's like a Grammy award show. And the winner is, you know, so you did a stellar job making that special in a whole different way. You know, now it's a televised Grammy kind of special instead of that. Gala. Well, I, I love the idea of the grant, the, the televised piece, right? I mean, I, I am so beyond words happy about that outcome. Um, but I have to say largely it's due to the women that were nominees and, you know, like every single woman that came to the table was nominated. Um, and really during a time that was so hard for everybody with everything that was going on, we're all working beyond long hours. We're pivoting, we're homeschooling, we're, you know, caring and worrying about our elderly parents. Um, you know, there's loved ones that are in danger with COVID and stuff like that. So there's lots of things going on and everybody completed the package and then not only completed the package, but they jumped in to support their peers. And what I thought was the most amazing piece, Tracy, is that, you know, I always, I always picture this popcorn, you know, the popcorn that we used to make on the stove, you know, how we popped up, you know, the leaders rose. And, you know, it was so encouraging to see the bar that we've raised for women where women are supporting other women and it's heartfelt and it comes with confidence. So I'd love to hear how that experience was for you because I was standing back and I jump right in and comment as much as I like everything. And um, my fingers were getting sore because I was commenting and I want to be a part of it. But what was so rewarding was seeing the impact that we're making in the ripple effect. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Right. And uh, yeah, so I think this is just the beginning of something very special, of course, that we have going on for 2021. Um, I want to um, touch base, you know, more on I want to get back to you, um, you know, and, and your dreams and your aspirations, because really, when when I was thinking about the awards, women in media, right, we always think of, you know, it's really great that you're amplifying the voice. But I thought it was really important that right now, more than ever, and Universal Women's Network is really positioning us to be like that media company, right, where we're elevating the voice of women to be seen, heard and valued. And how more fitting than to have an award for women in media, because as far as I'm concerned, it's people like you behind the scenes that really, really need to be acknowledged because you're championing for everybody else and you're propping everybody else up. But that's a lot of heavy lifting and a lot of work. So I'm really honored to be able to have um, now an award that recognizes the work that women do behind the scenes. It really means a lot. I really do appreciate it. And I, I love my work. I mean, elevating other women and, you know, like it's a, my passion and it's a lot of fun and, you know, it's so important. And I never really even thought of that. So it, it really was kind of nice to have the tables turned and to be applauded for that as well. So, yeah. So fun. when the tables were turned, I have to ask you, and this is a question that comes up with a lot of women. So those listeners, I know that you're listening going, yep, it's me. Imposture syndrome did that ever cross your mind 
you know? So I, um, I've not so much lately because I've been I'm really aware of imposter, imposter syndrome because I work with so many women across industries and I'm talking about power women. They, you know, I mean, they are like power. You know, that when they come out with things like that, they tell me that they're self doubt or that, and they use the word self doubt or that they're overwhelmed. And you're just like, have you seen your wrestling man? You, who are you comparing yourself to? That you're, but it's very common, right? So I have learned, like, I, I believe that I deserve a seat at the table, but I still, at the same time, so I, was, I wouldn't think imposter syndrome so much, you know, but in terms of like, the, but I was so shocked to be the one to get the award, you know? So like, maybe you can call that imposter syndrome because everyone else is saying to me, well, of course you would get it. Like, why are you surprised? And I'm like, what did you see? All those other women, they're so, you know, so I guess that is what actually, what you, now that you mentioned, that is what imposter syndrome is, even though I like to think that, no, you know? So yeah, so when you called my name, I was really like, what? Like, you know, oh, I'm the winner? <laughs> So, yeah, so I guess that is, you know, that is imposter syndrome, I guess, what they're talking about. Well, and, you know, I, I think that's really important that we talk about relatability. We talk about the journey and it's not such a, a clear path for a lot of women. Um, and I think that women that are listening or even men that are listening and saying, you know, my wife should be listening or my young daughter should be listening. It's all about doing what you love and everything that you do really leads to that bigger why or what you're supposed to be doing. Do you, would you agree with that? A thousand percent. And that all really does come down and that, you know, to what you the, we're around and back in the circle, but it comes down to, it's related to the imposter syndrome because it comes down to believing in yourself. hundred percent. And again, people say this all the time. And if you're not in that space where you can process it, you're, you're just hearing it as a bunch of stupid words. Right. But I, if I could implore people, this is seriously the key to success. And when you're, you know, jealous or envious of, or wondering why other people are able to do this and you're not and you're stuck, don't be stuck. Like, honestly, believe in yourself. Just believe, yeah, you know what? Okay, so that didn't work. How do I figure it out? Just be strategic and figure it out. And you are, there's, you know, Monica and I aren't better than anybody watching this who didn't get awards or create award shows. We might be more determined. We might be working harder. We, you know, we're putting our all in, but we're not like rarefied different people, you know, <laughs> like, but that's, a, you know what I mean, Monica? Because I think people often think that they look at these successful women or the women like the client that I represent like Patricia with, you know, uh, awards at her wazoo. And you're like, wow, how could, you, you know, I can't ever compare myself to that. But, you know, it's because someone like Patricia just was believed in herself and she just kept on working and she worked super hard and she kept, you know, and that's all that it is. It's just literally putting one foot in front of the other and not letting anybody that, that you know, people will always tell you, like, nobody's going to tell you, ah, hey, you know what, at the end of this road, you are going to be the best publicist ever. You're going to be an international award-winning artist, Patricia. You're going to, I mean, your mom might tell you that, but the world doesn't tell you that. You have to believe that. You Most have to. Most the time, the world it. tells you how you suck, really. The world really just sets you up for a lot of <laughs> Yeah. Confidence building. Your hair's not the right color. You're, you know, whatever. I never listened to that. I was like, okay, watch, watch. <laughs> Listen to your peers, get a support system, ignore the naysayers and go just have confidence and go. And I, I mean, honestly, we've all got this great big passion inside of us to do something special. And I, and I think, you know, a lot of the listeners are like, so but, you know, they're a woman of inspiration. What makes them a woman of inspiration? So what does, uh, what is your woman, what is your definition of a woman of inspiration? I couldn't get it out there for some reason. Um, I'm not going to re-record this. This is live. But what is your definition of a woman of inspiration, Tracy? I, I say, you know, similar to what my defini definition of a power woman is, which people are often calling me a power woman. And I say, unwrap that we are all power women literally literally so we're all women of inspiration because we are all inspiring somebody we're all doing amazing things whether it's in the corporate world or whether it's in the creative world whether it's in the entrepreneur world or whether you're not even there yet whether you just have a dream that you might do later but what you're doing today is waking up getting through some really hard times making sure your family's okay you know being a caregiver or just getting through the day yourself because some people are having a struggle doing that right now if you're still standing you know, you're inspiring somebody or you should be inspired yourself because you, every one of us got through a whole lot to get through to where we are today, mm -hmm. no matter where you are, whether you feel like it's where you should be or not, you made it, you woke up today, you got through all the BS 
to get here. So keep going. And I really love the wisdom that's coming from the woman of inspiration and sort of the um, champions for each other, champions for each other. We are here for you. And I think all of the women of inspiration are very giving of their expertise, um, their mentors to other women, um, their leaders. So if, if yeah. you know, those are characteristics of leadership, right? Are, you know, failure comes, uh, failure, 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 success failure, success, you know, um, real people doing real things. And that road is definitely paved with some detours, mm -hmm. but the women of inspiration that are in this circle have all experienced some setbacks, but every single one of them persevere and they all have tenacity and keep going. So I love that. And, and the encouragement, um, from yourself, Tracy, for, you know, other people to step into their own magic and their power is fantastic. That's what we need. We need people that are around us to support us. And we need people to say, keep going. Don't give up. If you have Absolutely. To pivot, pivot. pivot again. Just keep going. Yeah. And that's so, what WOI does. <laughs> that's what WOI does. And that's what we're going to do more of. Of course, 2021 is going to be an epic, epic uh, journey. Um, and then we're going to include the men to help us and support us on that journey too, because it's really important. Now, before we wrap up, I want to touch on, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. So what are kind of some of those lessons that you've, you've learned um, through the pandemic? Um, that, my business can survive a pandemic pretty well <laughs> is one of them. Cause I've learned, I don't want to use the word of the year, which is pivot, but um, I, I was able to pivot pretty successfully in the first month of the pandemic, you know, like or the first three weeks, I was pretty shocked because I mean, all of my, a lot of my work was involved travel and concerts and public speaking and all those things that literally don't, don't exist for a long time now. And hopefully we'll get, um, but then Again, mindset is always the answer because I was staring at the, you know, all the leaders from Canada and the States talking for like three weeks. So I felt like this. Literally, that's me in front of the TV. And then I suddenly was like, hey, stop it. What do you normally do? Get away from the TV. Go down to your desk. Start working on whatever you have left because I had about 20% of the stuff left. But for three weeks, I wasn't working on it. I was like, you know, so then I'm like, get that, stop it. No more TV, go downstairs, start working on the 20% you have left. And then, you know what, all of a sudden there was 30 and there was 40 and there was 50. And I just started talking to authors and bringing up now, I was, you know, promoting a whole bunch of authors because we're, what can't watch Netflix all day. Now's your time to get to your audience. So, and then new things started coming up. People referred me and other things happening. The world kept on spinning. And now I'm, I'm, I've been more busy through COVID. I almost forget about that aspect of COVID, when I see a status that says, hey, you know, I've watched everything on Netflix now, I'm getting, I'm like, is that what people are doing? Like, because you know, even if you don't want to be working for 10 months during COVID, every single art gallery, every school in the world is offering some free courses right now. I mean, there's a, you know what, look, there's a lot of things you can be, used this time. So I've learned that if you have some time, you know, you should go and use it. And you won't have time if you just don't, like, just don't get spun. You know that old thing, keep calm and carry on. <laughs> well, I guess that's what I did. This is the moment I stopped watching the TV and panicking. I went back to my desk and just started working on that 20% of work that I had left. All of a sudden, there was a lot of work to do. And I, I, I can't even take a day off now without people, you know, I had my birthday yesterday and I'm, it was hard work to take a day off. So, and that's in the middle of COVID. So, and I'm just a little one person business that has to keep on or two person now that has to, you know, spend half my time, you know, trying to get new clients and the other half working on the clients. I'm not, if I, I could have next month, nobody could pay me all of a sudden, you know, but I've been able to pivot right through COVID nine or 10 months. So I feel like I'm a lot more confident now in myself as a business person. And that's maybe why we incorporate, we actually were taking it seriously now, not that we weren't before, but the business side, we're now Lamori Media Inc. You know, so now I have a paycheck from my company instead of just being all the money that came in was my money. Now it's like, oh, there's a, you know, so that's a learning curve and shout out to Jane McCormick, my amazing business consultant to get this, you know, PR creative head around that side of, of things. <laughs> well, Tracy, don't like, here's the deal. 
you are honing your craft. And that's why as leaders, we surround ourselves with other really remarkable leaders because we wear all these hats, but we definitely need our team of experts around us. So I think that's one of the secrets to success is that we, we do, we give up. We're like, this is my area. I'm going to do this and I'll hire the, the team around me to help build me up. So it's great that you figured that out. And that's, what COVID has really <laughs> done for you is it's kind of said, Hey, let's take this very seriously. Let's take this to the next level. Yeah. And now I want to be like, the, you know, I want to be one of the top PR firms in Canada, not just a, a really good PR firm with a good reputation. That's doing a lot with one person in a base. You know what I mean? Watch me, watch me now. Watch what, where are we going in a year? <laughs> Partly because of my well, woman of inspiration. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. And I think that that's inspiring for other people to see, um, you know, and people can relate to the whole stuck piece because I mean, I didn't, I actually did not have time to do that. I had to force myself to take downtime because I always look at the, the outcome. So in March, I was looking at November, you know, July, I was looking at next July. So I'm always looking into the future visionary, right? That's what I do. But um, I think for, you know, anybody watching that might not, you know, automatically think to the future, it's the right now is just start moving one step at a time. And we talked in the green room, even about our self care routines, just move. That's it. One small little change can have a catastrophic impact on your life. Mm -hmm. So Tracy, any last words that you'd like to leave our listeners with today? I was really excited. We covered a lot of territory. We went around the corner back again and, you know, we, we got a lot accomplished today. I know this is going to be the first of our conversations. We, there's certainly lots of work that we can do to elevate women. What um, would you love our listeners to be left with today? Just with those same thoughts that, you know, just, you know what, rewind this whole episode and listen to it and process, really process it. Because we've said a lot of things in here that, again, you know, some of the things sound like cliches, but it will change your life. Like if you really listen to it, because I think part of the reason I've been so successful in life is I learned really young, thankfully, that my voice can make a difference. Like as a teenager, I learned that and I never stopped doing this. So every single thing I've done has in my life that I cared about has been impactful because I learned that it could be. If you don't think it can be, if you don't think you're impactful, you won't be. I didn't start out with any connections, you know, or anything. I just had a voice like we all do and the passion to use it and, the, and, the, and not to be afraid of what somebody would think of me or whatever else, you know? So, I mean, obviously you gotta be worried about what people think, you know what I mean? But I mean, don't let them, like you say, don't let the naysayers get you down. If you know you're doing something right, if you believe in what you're doing, do it, believe in it. And just, you know, like you will be successful and success can mean a whole bunch of different things. It doesn't always mean instant money. I'm 51 years old and now I'm opening my, I'm figuring out the business side of things now. So I kind of did things backward, but I'm happy with the way I did things because, you know, like I said, I, I end my, I'm, my career is now very much the way my activist life was, only I'm paid for it. I'm that much more powerful in, a, in my ability to amplify those things that I care about. Mm. And you know, what could be better, right? So. Amazing. And I think that's really great advice, uh, Tracy. And just the network that we're building of dynamic women that are just really doing some remarkable work there. They've all got their own stories. You've got your own path. Everybody's got their own path, but we all understand something very important. The secret ingredient is to listen to that internal voice, um, to not give up, to be surrounded by others that are willing to help you on your journey. And I think that's probably one of the, the biggest things that we can do to help and support each other. So listeners, if you're watching, you need a network um, of rock star um, women, of course, Universal Women's Network nominate, because uh, we are now actually nominating um, nominations are open 365 days a year, because it's why I have to wait for a certain day to say, hey, that woman needs a little bit of um, recognition. So we open the nominations 365 days. So Tracy, pleasure, pleasure speaking with you. I love the view, by the way. Um, where are you? Watch this. You, th you guys think this is a Zoom. <laughs> I had to do that. I'm at the Intercontinental Hotel Montreal. So this is not my office or my regular podcast spot. but actually partly the reason I'm here we we get we got a little room and I told them about my women of inspiration win 
and also my birthday this week. And they actually upgraded me as a result of that to a beautiful tower suite with two full bedrooms. And they've been treating me like a queen. So again, that's part, you know, you elevate us and people see us. Mm, amazing. And I so love, I'm enjoying love a beautiful week. My mind is special. blowing. I think we need a, a Universal Women's Network card and uh, you've got, oh my gosh. <laughs> A rewards card for women owned. Just saying. Yeah, VIP are VIP discounts, right? So, well, thank you, Tracy. Enjoy your wonderful birthday weekend in Montreal. Stay safe. And I look forward to the epic journey ahead. And of course, for those listeners, um, Tracy uh, will put Tracy's information on the show notes below. But, Tracy, if people want to get hold of you, how can they learn more? Yeah, if you want any, if you're if you're an awesome person doing awesome things and you might want some media attention, that's what I do is get people in the news. And it's not just celebrities and sports stars, it's entrepreneurs and passionate people about whatever you're doing. Um, so you can find me where I live on Facebook, Tracy Lamori, or Tracy Lamori PR Media on Instagram, um, or Lamori PR at gmail.com or my website, lamorimedia.com. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, and congratulations once again on your 2020 Woman of Inspiration, Woman in Media Award. And uh, that's a wrap for this Woman of Inspiration podcast. My name is Monica Kretschmer. Have a great, great day. And, uh, you know, nominate those women of inspiration in your world because it really does make a difference. Um, it builds their confidence and it really validates everything that they're doing. Take care, everyone.